What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to Samcraft. We are in the future home of Samcraft. And uh, uh, don't peek too much above your head because today is all about setting roof trusses, framing them up, getting them done, building ladder rake overhangs on my eaves, subfascia boards, and absolutely everything all in one video for framing up a roof. I just carried over my gable end truss, and even though this thing is 20 feet wide, it is not super heavy, especially with my tool belt rig, the big shoulder pads. I'm able to just put that board right here across the pad, distributes the weight, and it's actually pretty easy to carry over. So I just lifted the gable truss into place. Now I'm gonna attach some of these guys. These are some two by six scraps that I cut, and I attached a piece of my siding to it. That way I can put this up on the outside of the wall, attach this into the studs, let the truss hit against this, and then we can attach it down and keep everything nice and plumb. Sweet berries and jam. Well, this truss was not very easy to put in place, but it is here, and I no doubt will get better as I go along and I'll learn more tricks and hopefully it will be easier. So my next thing to do is to lock it in place, hook it to this gable truss and make sure everything is plumb, square, and spaced correctly. What I have here is a two x four cut to the exact length that I need. This is going to overhang and go over my gable truss since I have what are called drop trusses. They are lower. This is designed to sit over it and then I build out my eave in the end. So I figure, why not? Let's go ahead and make it official. Let's do it right and not just throw up some scrap boards to take them down to then do this in the future anyway. These two worked great. So now it's a matter of rinse and repeat, going all the way up and over to the other end, putting these on two foot centers.
just barely tall enough to do that. Give me some platform shoes. In the spirit of trying new things, why not? We are already forging ahead, breaking some ice on things I've never done before, so why not change it up just as soon as I think I may have a system in place? Okay, so here's my thoughts. I just brought over three of my common trusses, flipped them up, set them up, and leaned them against what I already had in place. What I'm now gonna try is getting a handful of two by fours, full lengths, attaching them to the underside, or rather the inside, of the existing truss that was already mounted, and then pulling these out and attaching them to my two by fours, kind of going from the back there to right here. If any of this makes sense, it'd be surprising. Basically what I'm hoping is that having these long boards here will prevent me from having to measure cut, measure cut, and install a bunch of little blocks of wood between each truss member, and just allow me to use that long board inside to kind of space it, attach, and keep on going. So we'll give it a shot. It's either gonna work or not. It's about the only two options out here. Guys, that worked fantastic. It was easy to do. It was a lot less up and down, and I just did the scaffold dance. That's pretty much it. Having that scaffolding is worth its weight in gold. It's painted yellow, but in my book, that baby's solid gold. You obviously saw how much that saved me from going up and down, up and down, moving a ladder. It gave me a much larger platform to work from. It was much safer. I was able to have all of my tools and equipment up there and just move it around however I needed to. Very, very nice. So I got three trusses put up in just over 40 minutes, which is phenomenal, seeing as the gable truss and the first common truss given also did the ladder boards. That took me about two and a half hours. So much, much easier. At this point though, I am out of two by fours. I have used them all up. There went my 125 boards that I bought for this building. But hey, it framed out everything and it's done everything you see here. And that is pretty good. I'll see you guys tomorrow when I get more wood and we get back up here to do some more scaffold dance. Guys, things are going pretty well. It is not a super fast process. I think it's around 10 minutes per truss for, an, I include, you know, a 30 minute total work time to put three up. So it's not too bad. It is not a super fast process. But again, I'm being picky. I'm making sure they're lined up correctly. I'm going ahead and attaching them to the H1 Simpson clips out there on the wall. And also the two by fours running across as my blocking or stabilizers, brace boards, whatever they're called. I'm doing it all as I go. So I'm at least, you know, done with everything. Once I leave an area, that is done. So that is something to feel good about. 
At this point, I only have seven left to do. So let me go ahead and fill in the rest of these, ones that are actually purely identical to what you've already seen. And I'll see you guys when we get over here to this gable end, when we do the creative work there. I wanna show you a thing that you need to do so you don't forget, I'll show you that. And then we'll build our last ladder rake, I believe that's what it is. The two by four boards that hang over the drop truss on the end and then form out my eave. And then we will have made a huge milestone and great accomplishment in the workshop today. All right, guys, I am down to this last step and I only have four more trusses to do. Now, what I wanted to talk about that I mentioned earlier is how to handle the ends. You wanna make sure that you get at least your last two, possibly three trusses up and lean it against your gable end truss before you finish out filling. Otherwise, you gotta figure out how to lift your truss in upright all the way up to the top and that might be difficult. So let's go ahead and flip these upright, lean them against my gable truss, then we'll get up here and keep doing the same thing. But really, four more to do, pretty cool. Two work days and all of the roof trusses are in place. It looks really weird actually, to be honest. There is a whole web of two by fours up there and somehow magically they span 20 feet wide. Even though there's a joint in the middle, they're held together by these little flimsy nail things. But I don't know, it's magic I guess. But it is done for the trusses. I still need to build out my roof ladder rakes here on this end of the workshop, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow. However, you guys sit tight. We're just one second away for another day. My ladder boards are done, so what I'm going to do now is take this 12 foot two x four, I'm gonna clamp it to the top of one of my trusses and transfer the angle cuts from this truss top board to this board to then give me the board I need to put on the outside of those ladder rakes. I'm going with the assumption that all of these trusses are identical. What I've done should be also identical and just making another copy of this top cord on the truss, replicating it out there should be fine with my angles, lengths, and line up perfectly. All right, this top two by four is clamped in place. It is overhanging here and down at the bottom. I'm gonna use my speed square, just a straight edge, and I'm gonna copy this angle straight up onto this board and mark it with the pencil. Now I'm gonna go down to the other end without moving this board and do the same thing where it hangs over the building. This guy is all marked, time to take it down, cut it, make it into a template and copy it three times for a total of four of these boards. As far as laying out your template, just put it on top of the board you wanna cut. I always like to clamp it into place as well. 
That way I don't move it when I go to the other end to mark it. Put it where you want it here. Just put a mark here. Go down to the end, mark it there. And then just cut it off with your circular saw. There you go. All done. Four of them cut. Let's get outside and hang these up. Stand up on the trusses. It's some easier. Except my drills down there. Mm. All right. What I'm going to do first is stitch these two together to hold my top angle exactly like I want it. Then I'll work it back and forth to get it even with my two by fours. But I believe this is probably going to be the thing that gives me the best chance of success. I'm using this 2x4 as a straight edge. I'm gonna line up my ridge point here with my other trusses down the line, and that'll get me straight, and I'll be able to lock this into place while I'm up here. That looks good. All right, guys, welcome to what I hope is the final little bit of work on framing out this roof. I finished both of my eave framings and right now I'm getting some tools together. I'm gonna hop on the front of our tractor, have my son pick me up, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the subfascia board. This will be the easiest thing, at least out here in the front area of the field where we got room to work. And will just save me from having more ladder time because I'm done with ladder time.
Well guys, four to five work days later, I kind of forget, but the roof framing is completely done. The trusses have been raised, the gable end trusses and the common ones, they've been tied together. My gable ladder rake overhangs have been done, my eaves built out, and even my subfascia boards attached. This is completely ready to be sheathed out and have the roofing installed next. If you guys got any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, feel free to leave me a comment down below. If you've also just caught this one video and you're interested to see this entire build, there's a playlist link down below which will start you at the very beginning of breaking ground and take you all the way into the future when this is a completed new workshop space. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.